been suboptimal and you have to fix the hitting. Like you had a 10 game road trip against three world series contenders. You held in, in 10 of those games, seven of them, you gave up two or less runs. You went four and six on the trip. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Rays, your daily podcast covering everything Tampa Bay Rays. From game analysis to player interviews, we've got you covered with all the latest news and insights. My name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. It is your boy, Evan Kowalski. And we appreciate it, bringing you expert analysis and passionate discussions about our beloved Rays. Whether you're a diehard fan who vividly remembers Longo's Game 162 just like us. Or you remember those early Devil Ray days of Wade Boggs and Carl Crawford. We are here to break down every play, every trade, and every milestone. In fact, this is our sixth season covering the Rays daily. In every season... Up until now, they've gone to the playoffs, but you can still grab your favorite Rays gear, settle in, subscribe to our Locked on Rays YouTube channel and other podcast platforms. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked on Rays. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, uh, we've got the greatest sportscaster in all of Tampa Bay history on the program, Evan Klosky. That's, that's how I certainly would define myself. <laughs> yeah, that's how your agent would define yourself right, as well. Um, last week, we brought up, out of the blue, essentially, mm-hmm. the possibility or putting it out there that maybe the Rays tried to shore up things offensively up the middle and oh why not go out and trade for Bo Bichette so we had some more time to think about that and that's more or less what this entire episode is going to be about but before we get into the bones of this this discussion I just want to ask Evan Point Blake how likely this offseason are the Rays to go out and make an offer and or acquire Bo Bichette, scale of one to 10. Like how no idea. is this a serious I, I, thing? I, probably not, but that's the whole point of this stuff. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying it's improbable though. Um, it's, you know, I think that they're the most creative team when it comes to trades and all that stuff. And I, I think that this is all part of the process of, of figuring out how you're going to navigate your way in the future. I think we all agree the pitching staff should be phenomenal in 2025, assuming they're all healthy. The sad part about this year is for once, the Rays pitching really didn't have a a catastrophic injury. And this is the year they kind of stink it up. And, uh, you know, I say stink it up usually. They're they're a 500 team. Right. Uh, There are a handful of squads that would love to have that. Um, But, you know, from the, the bar that the Rays have set, you know, it, it certainly has been been suboptimal. And you have to fix the hitting. Like, you had a 10-game road trip against three World Series contenders. You held in, in 10 of those games, seven of them, you gave up two or less runs. You went four and six on the trip. <laughs> How does that happen? So, you know, like, you are... And especially in a year where, like, this year is totally up for grabs. I think we entered the year being like, Dodgers, 100%. Look at the, 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 just their arms have completely fallen apart. Who knows what's happening in L.A.? Glass now out for the season. Um, we're used to hearing that in, yeah. in, in the Tampa Bay area. And then, um, and then you look at, like, the Yankees, and I don't think they, they are quite what we saw in April and May. And you just look, it's like, man, the World Series is completely up for grabs this year. And and for the Rays to not be in that mix, it's yeah. that, that one hurts. But you it, but you gotta be honest with yourself and you gotta say, we gotta fix the hitting. And so this is where we're at. I think a hundred percent. I I we were talking about it on Wednesday. Like, if you're serious about twenty twenty five, 
you got to address the elephant in the room. I mean, we, we can talk all we want about how good that, you know, that pitching staff is, but if you don't address the hitting and all the arms that are coming back and all the, how the bullpen is shaping up that shape, the, I mean, the bullpen is shaping up to be amazing. And, 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 and for once we'll we see. know that the I said the same thing yeah. during the yeah. season, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I, you know, if things should go well, you, you are not worried about the arms. You're worried about the bats, man. And it's, it's crazy. So this hypothetical is bringing a bat in that has done that for years in the past on a free agent uh, to be because he will be a free agent after the 2025 season. So how did you start looking into this? Was it just organic or did you just start to, you know, say, you know what, maybe they should get a little bit more offensive production from the shortstop position than what Taylor Walls is doing. Yeah, I mean, you just look at the positions where it's an albatross. And, I mean, I've also mentioned catcher. It's just really hard to – like, they need to 1,000% upgrade a catcher. It's it's really hard to do that because yeah. catchers are really – like, really productive offensive catchers are hard to find. Like, in Major League Baseball, not very common, right? Mm-hmm. And if you have one, you hold on. I mean, even the Dodgers, who have Will Smith – they're not allowing Dalton rushing to go anywhere. I would imagine some of the other uh, prospects who are coming up, like, uh, you know, the Queros and all these names, it's just they're they're going to keep them. So that's the – I don't know how you 100% fix that. You probably just need to hopefully get a couple of people who can hit 10 to 12 homers in a season. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that would – I, I, how many home runs do the catchers have this year for the Rays? Like maybe ten combined, maybe. If you can, if you can get that number to twenty five to to twenty or twenty five, I mean, do they reach ten, man? I don't know. I mean, what Jackson had? What, Pinto had I, two. Had Jackson, had, Jackson had two. Jackson only had two. I thought he had like three. He had three. Okay, let's put three on I, Jackson. Those were two, all of his hits. Two. That's five. Yeah, all of his hits. Three. Um, one by Driscoll. Now that's six. How many does uh, Benny have? Four. It's sad. I'm looking. I'm looking up the stats. It's, it's not a lot. So Jackson had three. Okay, Jackson had three. Pinto had two. So that's five already. The fact that this is an argument, it's it's insane, people. Yeah, and, and that's and why Rortveth, we're bringing up. Hey, Jackson, let's go out and get Jackson Gobert. three. Rordvet three. Pinto. You had nine. We have right, not exactly. I think I, I knew it. Homers. Not even ten. I knew yeah, it. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, even. And I mentioned this before, even the Mejia Bethancourt combo produced yeah. 20 some odd home runs. And so it's like, if you're going to get really bad hitting from the catcher position, at least get me double the homers in the process. Right. And I, and I understand why they went for Jackson last year. I understand why they thought he was going to be that guy who can provide some serious pop at the major league level. Oh, here's a dude who just didn't, you know, get his shot. Uh, in, in major league level, he's shown it in triple a and we can provide that opportunity. Didn't happen. So on to the next one, but yeah. yeah. So you, you look at catcher that needs to be upgraded. You look at left field, it, whatever, whatever corner outfield position, um, you know, Josh, I assume is going to stay in right left field, I think is a, is a, a gaping hole right now with Randy removed. And so you got to add, you got to add some pop there as well. So I would say like left field, shortstop, catcher are really the main positions of need and center field, of course. But, uh, you know, as long as it's, I, they might they might have to have Siri another year. Like to me, Siri, what, has 22 homers this year? Mm-hmm. I mean, what, okay. like, they, I, found this on I think he's got 18, right? No, 17. Is it, is, is that what it is? Nobody on the team has 20. No, it didn't. Yeah, I think it's 22. I, um, no, he's got 18. My apologies. 18. Um, 18. Yes. So he might end up with 20 this year. Yeah. My whole bender in the year was enough. 20. No, that's no, not no. Enough. But, my, but, but it's center field. Go look at the position. How many center fielders are hitting like 20 plus homers? It's not as many as you think. So now, now his average is terrible, right? That's, yeah. that, it's horrific to watch him play when he's in a slump and he's 0 for 25. Like that, that's just part of it. But the whole point is you can take one. I can't have redundancy. So if you keep, if, if you fix 
maybe left field, you fix shortstop, you fix catcher, you can live with Siri. Now you've, now you've reduced Siri's importance in a lineup. And now if he's a dude that gets 20 homers in a year, you'll take it. You'll just, I mean, it's whatever. That's fine. I, and then I you want, whatever hitting, whatever hitting comes along with it. I want to, I want to do a little bit more of that talk before we go back to Bichette, but Kevin, you need to first tell us something very, very important. Yes, we do have to tell the audience very important. And that is arena club.com for most of us that like collecting cards, the idea of spending two grand or more on a Luca Ellie or Mahomes rookie card just isn't in the cards. Unless maybe you're Stu Sternberg. Um, you love collecting. I love collecting. We all love collecting, but that's some serious money to drop. Well, thanks to Slab Packs from ArenaClub.com, now it is possible to score gem mints for a fraction of their retail price. Did you know that Arena Club is the only repack that provides real value, a complete view of all possible cards, and clear hit rates for each one? Right now, you can get 10% off your first slab pack or card purchase by going to arenaclub.com slash MLB and use code LOCKDOWNMLB. That's arenaclub.com slash MLB code LOCKDOWNMLB, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for 10% off your first purchase. Going back to the Siri um, conversation, because you're right, the... You'll take the defensive prowess if it comes with pop because there's not a lot of center field lists that come with pop. Although I don't have that list on me, but now you've made me very, very intrigued yeah. on like... I mean, ooh, personally, I like after watching enough of Jose Siri and his antics, I'd rather have a center fielder that gives you 11 home runs and a 265 batting average. And this yeah, is you, my point. I mean, if I, this is my point. getting who also is that good defensively? Well, th this is my point, uh, Kevin and Evan. Um, so... I think it's it does a little bit of a disservice when we just say, hey, he's got pop and he's got great uh, glove skills and really fast. And, yeah, he strikes out a ton. And sometimes he goes on really long stretches of, of, of not doing anything productively. Like, those are all things that are true. But I think the component of you're a major league player and in one season it's made public that they're benching you? Twice in a year, I think he's a, a clubhouse and organizational problem. And there's a third. I don't think time? he's a clubhouse problem. I, I think he's. Nah. This isn't like. A, let's not go there with this. He's got a. He's got a, an electric personality. He takes it too far sometimes on the field with the way he plays. The the guys on the bench they like him. All right, okay. and and a lot of the people within the Rays they like him too. But he doesn't understand when to do it, and it sometimes he gets pissy. When he doesn't hit and it 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 just it is a little bit laborious it's like you know sometimes he's not a guy who you can just say i can't keep my eyes off of him and he'll just do the right thing like he's a guy that you gotta manage there's a difference between managing a guy consistently and that being tiresome versus what wander franco was doing last year when he got benched and he was like literally teammates hated him was causing problems um like Jose Siri is not like a bad teammate. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying he's a bad teammate. I'm saying. No, I'm just saying with Kevin's comment. Oh, yeah, I, I, I misrepresented that. I, I should have. Yeah. I guess I would say that. I, I'm just saying we gotta, we gotta make sure that people understand right. because they are coming off the Wander Franco stuff last year, true. where yeah. a lot of the organizational stuff that you mentioned was true. A lot of the bad teammate stuff was true. It's just it's a different type of managerial stuff with Siri. It's just like he's got to constantly, you got to constantly be on him. And it's tiresome as a grown man to be managing another grown man. So right. all that stuff, you you know, I understand the reasons to be like, we just got to get ourselves out of this, but you also need an answer. And if the answer is I can't manage him, but he's better for our team, then I got to ask, why are you managing? Because that's right. what you're in this profession for. So, right. and, and I don't think, you know, the Rays are going to take the easy way out. I, I think that they, you know, they, they will have to, they, I, I think there's parts of them to understand they eventually got to get a future answer in that spot. I don't know if they have that and they can't fix everything in one off season. So I think in a bucket, they're sitting there being like, we would love to replace this, but can we do it in, in one off season? 
I don't know. We might have to go right back to the Siri well for another year. It could be piecemeal. And I think it, out of every single other position that you mentioned out of need of to change, he is the most stable one that you could say, you know what? That's another year. You can't do the same thing for, for catching and, and shortstop. Uh, you, you, you got to address those. Now, I don't know. We're getting old folks, uh, you know, 20 plus, uh, 25 plus years watching baseball. I don't remember the last time I saw a team that I followed bench a guy twice in a year and and be a mainstay i don't remember that no matter if it was for this reason or that that reason or the left field reason or the right field reason it's just it, you don't i don't <laughs> that doesn't really happen that often and like it, it my thing is i don't think he's i don't think he's going to be a mainstay but it's like is he going to be out of here this off season possibly but i don't is think it's 50 like, for you you think yeah i think it's you got to see what that what the market tells you and you have to it depends on what other move to me to me series pop provides something walls walls as bad as a walk like literally he goes up to the plate and it's like please walk like that's that's what he does he's yeah. elite at walking and i understand it from a super conservative defensive position of like he plays great defense he walks a lot screw the bat and again if you had one guy like that in your entire lineup I can live with it, but you got to pick and choose between walls and Siri. I think you can't, you can't just have people, you can't have like eight and nine at the bottom of your lineup. Just be like essentially auto outs. You can't do and, it. Not at this and level. This has been not eight, nine, defense, been six through nine, you know, you're just breaking even in the end. And I get it. You have like an amazing pitching staff. So you rather break even on the conservative side versus saying like great bat, terrible defense. It'll even yeah. out like, I understand being like, oh, we'll take you know great glove over great bat, but you can't do that for every position. So you, exactly. it's it's not enough balance. It's not balanced. So that's why like everything is like its own route, and then you test the market, you see what's out there, you see what's less painful to get, and then you kind of make that move, and then you say, well, you know, I we like we can we can enter the season with Siri next year. We can enter the season with walls. We can enter the season with DeLuca and like, you can do some of these things. It's just like, you gotta like fix other holes in the boat too. And I, like, and it would be unrealistic to think that the Rays are going to fix left field, center field, shortstop and catcher in one off season while also having an aging, though still productive right side of the infield. So right. It, like there's a they're in transition here you know they they and and they have the the best farm system in baseball and they're trending in a great direction love where they're heading but entering next year even with this amazing pitching staff i don't know if they're going to be able to do the requisite amount of changes to get the hitting up to speed but that's how i kind of landed on the boba shut thing now with that yeah going into it is supposed to be the topic of the show, Bo Bichette. Um, for what it's worth, Bob Nightingale months ago had reported that Bo had told friends that he would welcome a trade. And, of course, this is a non-historic year for Bichette um, as he's just returning from a strained right calf and having by far the worst season of his professional career. Look at the batting average, home runs, RBIs, game played, all that. Uh, not uh, not like what it's been the past three seasons where he's been a four to five war player. Um, so, Evan, in terms of trying to get Bichette from the Blue Jays, what do you think it would take to make that acquisition? Um, you mentioned it. The Rays have the number one farm system. The Blue Jays have one of the worst farm systems, so maybe they can – play up that angle a little bit uh, among some other considerations. So first off right now, and again, you take it with a huge grain of salt, huge, like I hate throwing this stuff out there because people think it's a one for one, but just from an objective standpoint of black and white baseball trade values has Bichetta like a minus 0.9 value. Now in July, he was like an 8.8. .8. If you right. go to the beginning of the season, it continues to tick back up, right? He was like so, at 21. So so 
entering the offseason, you're not going to get Boba Shett for a negative 0.9 value, right? Blue Jays are, is going to say, hey, this is a guy who's on the books for $12 million this year, $17 million next year. And that's pretty good value for a dude who, outside of last year with a bunch of injuries, was a four to five war player. One war probably these days cost anywhere between like five to six million dollars. All right. So let's say that Bo Bichette is just a three war player. And okay. let's say that the war value is down like, let's just say five million, five million per year per war. Um, and I, I feel like that's a you know a fairly conservative number. I think in 2023 it was 4.6. I think in you know this off season it was like 6.8. So you know it, it depends. Um, that's a 15 million dollar player at three war. So he's making 12 next year. So in the Rays when they're doing the the way that they look at things, you know you got Stu Sternberg his his Wall Street background. Theoretically, you can make money on this guy. Right. I'm right. paying less than his worth and at a conservative number of his worth. And it's with minimal risk, to be honest, um, because it really it, it's just a two year deal. So if, it, if things go south, you might have to eat the 17 million. But that's also baked into the price of I'm not going to give you him at full value if I'm making this trade. You're going to get Bo Bichette. You're going to trade me Bo Bichette and you're going to get 50 cents on the dollar because I got to take the risk of that second year. And I think that's a worthwhile risk for the Rays to take. I think Wait, that- on the second, what do you mean by second year? Because Bichette only has one year of right. team control left. No, he's, he, his contract, okay. he's got, he's got two more years left. I looked at it. Oh, I, him to a, I don't know uh, where like I saw mini. that. I thought he was going to get free agents. Oh, the end of 2025. Okay. That's right. Yeah. yeah end of 2025. Me. So you have a, you're you're obligated to him for two years, which actually could be a good thing. Um, Guys, good well, end of here's, 2025 is just one season. What are we talking about? We're mixing up years. Uh, I yeah, I maybe I'm. This article is just messing me up here. We we need to go to to baseball reference. You know, and before you do that, I gotta tell you guys something. It's Fanduel, and you've heard us talk about Fanduel for so many episodes already and guess what you know that it's america's number one sports book well we have something a little different for you now through september 22nd all FanDuel customers can bet five dollars that's the one with abe lincoln on it and get a three week free trial of nfl sunday ticket from youtube and youtube tv then with a youtube tv base plan you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. So for example, if you're in the wise household and you're in Tampa Bay, guess what? You might be able to see the, uh, the Colts or you might be able to see the, the, the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. It's, it's, it's a divided household there in their NFL teams. Okay. And they can do that. That's an amazing thing. And I know that the wises are, are doing their best to do this. So today you can join them and you can just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one, sports book <laughs> all right evan ulysses i think we've gotten we, to the bottom of we the have fixed it. That contract well, hold on i i my notes i messed up my notes when reading it bo Bichette is on one more year he's got one more year in 2025 yeah. yanni diaz for example has a club option for 2026 okay so he's potentially two years bo Bichette's just one so when i do my whole thing now he needs to be kind of a 3.5 war player if we're playing it conservatively. But again, he's been mostly a 4-5 guy. Yeah. So mm-hmm. still, everything that I said still makes sense um, sure. okay. beforehand. I still think you can get good value. But I'm a little disappointed. Was- I wanted two years of Bo Bichette before he hit free agency. But alas, <laughs> if we did it. Yeah, that's my bad. Like- no, that's my bad. I have not here. I wrote no, down. No, honestly, I honestly. I don't honestly, even know why I wrote down the two numbers because it's not like I give a crap about 2024. So that's that's just bad note taking on this. Me. This is this actually makes a little bit more sense, boys, because who are we talking about all the time? Uh, Carson Williams. Well, you know, you give one year of seasoning in triple a hopefully carson williams from beginning to end bo gets his year and then next year boom 
you get your 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 Carson Williams Jr. Caminero treatment of like, hey, this is your position. You take her for the next seven years. Or why not both? Why have why not have Bobachet move to second base or Carson well, Williams? Because move to second base? Let's say Bobachet has a great year, right? If he has a great year, he's gonna get a pretty big contract. You ain't gonna sign him to that. And if he has a bad year, you're not gonna want him. So yeah. it's like you know, the fact is he's the perfect guy for this team coming back home. By all accounts, at least from reports, he doesn't necessarily, you know, there, there might be some sort of falling out there with Toronto. Toronto doesn't seem like they're going to give him a long-term deal. Right. So I'm sure Toronto would love to get something for him. And I think the Rays, it makes a lot of sense to do a little change of scenery. Come to, come to Tampa Bay, you know. Come we'll home. A, He's we'll from up a, here. He's, that's, he's yeah, done a lot I'm of saying. damage in the trap. That's, that's what I'm saying. Come, to, come, come back home. And... Uh, we'll take that $17 million salary because, A, the Rays have cleared a lot of the books off. And if the Rays wanted to, theoretically, and I, again, I, I don't really know what the trade would be right. to Toronto because I don't. they need pitching. And it might be as simple as saying, hey, we'll give you Ian Seymour, right? Uh, we'll give you Joe wow. Rock. Wow. Um, now, I love Ian Seymour, but... It, no, just, I, 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 I'm a Seymour truther in this podcast, and I would, I would take that deal. Yeah, I, so th- I mean, that's my whole point. Is like, you know, Ian Seymour is a guy who can probably pitch immediately for the Blue Jays as well next year. Tons of team control, easy, you know. Evan, you are Eric Neander. You're offering the Blue Jays. What's your offer? What's your best offer? I mean, just like in a vacuum, without worrying about the, uh, the, what the Blue Jays need. Right, I'll either offer them one of my AAA pitchers, okay, um, you know, and I, that could be a Jacob Lopez, that could be a, an Ian Seymour, you know, or um, if there's a bigger picture out there that I'm not necessarily seeing with Eric, maybe, maybe Neander would move, you know, Yandi for Bo one for one, and you have kind of this Brandon Lau, Jonathan Aranda type of deal at DH and first base. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's two lefties, but you know, something along those lines of where you can do that and yeah. maybe we get a one for one swap. So it would be, I just feel like the, why would the, not that the blue Jays wouldn't want Yandy Diaz, Yandy. but they already have Vlad Guerrero taking up first base and DH. No, you just put him at DH. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm okay. saying. I, I, you know, it, He'd be a DHL guy out. and boost up the Could, offense. You know, I, hey, I feel you know, like the Blue Jays need pitching more than anything, right? Now. That's and that's really what it comes down to, which is why I would give them one of you know. Okay, Seymour. let me let me be a little bit edgy because in any way, like Seymour, Seymour isn't even on the forty man yet, so technically you can. I mean, so I'm you like, think a, a Yandy and a Seymour would absolutely get it done, or should get it done? I, Yandy or I mean, yeah, like Bo Bichette, one year deal, seventeen million dollars coming off an injury and a 0.3 war. I mean, he was on pace for his like second worst defensive season. Like Seymour and Fairbanks. Would you do that trade? Why, why am I throwing it? I'm not overpaying for Bo Bichette. Like they can keep Bo Bichette if they want. I'm here to take okay. Bo Bichette off their hands ah. and for them and for them to get something for him because you're not going to sign him long-term. Fair. I need Bo Bichette. You don't. You can move on. I'll give you a pitching. I'll give you someone who can go into your starting lineup because you need somebody on the back end. Here you go. Here's here's our, our starting pitcher eight. You know from from our from, <laughs> from exactly the in the and yeah. from Neander's perspective. Wow. Like you know, think about all the arms that they have. I mean, as much as I like Seymour, they are flush with pitching. Yeah, and least, between like Seymour, yeah. between Seymour, Rock, Lopez, like. They got some depth they can trade. So yeah. there you go. Take 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 Lopez or Seymour or Rock. Whatever one you like, take them. They'll go right into your line into your back of the rotation for 2025. And you fix a hole, we fix a hole. Yeah. And that's it. And Boba Shet's probably a one-year thing. And that's all the Rays need. They need a one-year guy. And guess what? If Boba Shet is a four-five win type of guy, now the Rays don't have to do as much to fix this team. You just added a four or five win guy at shortstop. You have Junior Caminero at third. Let's let's say you you've kept Yandi, right? You haven't traded him. Yandi, 
Morales. I would hope that you don't trade Yanni because again, yeah, you you're, have, you're you still have kind of Yanni. in the same boat if you trade Yanni yeah. to get Here, Bo Bichette. Here's your infield: yeah. Caminero, Bichette, Morel, Bilal, Yandi in like in that grouping. Then you have Aranda Mead on your bench. You got, and then you got an outfield that hopefully Josh Lowe is better next year. We think he will be. And uh, then you just got a defensive center fielder and a, a, a left field. A DeLuca, Richie Palacios. DeLuca, yeah, let's, you know, and we we kind of shuffle some of these these good players. And not to mention Chandler Simpson, I assume, would come up at some point in 2025 and maybe start in left field uh, while, you know, Siri man's center. So Ooh, the Kevin also, Kiermaier treatment of 2014, I like it. Yeah, so um, to me, then at that point, you just have to fix catcher. Like you can get Bo Bichette, fix catcher, and I can go into 2025 with that team and feel pretty good about things. Mm. Can we take the pretty out of that? And just and feel be- and feel more optimistic. Okay, thank you. Pretty good about it. I'm like, okay, okay let's, let's hold the horses enough. here when fair we're talking enough. about that. Um, Kevin, it I do want shocking to- because I I really thought it would take a lot more than a Seymour or Joe Rock to get it done. I yeah. it if it does, I'm out. Like, that's prospects. what it comes down. The fact is, it like if you're the Blue Jays, um, I just don't know. Like, what do you? Are you really just going to bring in Bo Bichette for the for one more year to just let him walk away, or are you going to hope that you maybe recoup some of this value and trade him at the the deadline? Um, I just like to me, I don't know what your future plan is here with Bo Bichette. Like, it just seems like he's on the outside. I think yeah. so too. I think that's the point. I would love to hear from Locked On Blue Jays to hear what their thoughts are. Yeah, we'll have are. to get in touch with them. And uh, we do have like a lot I- of listener comments that we'll have to get to on, on Friday's show. I will say, um, just a little foreshadowing, the poll is very close. It's like the what the is presidential it? election could be like as far as, oh yes, we should go after him. No, we should stay away from him. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. People would be... I, I, thought, I thought people would be either one or... Yes, or or no, it would be a landslide. I didn't think it would be that that tight. No, it is very close as of uh, as of this recording right now. So uh, okay, all right. There we go. All right. Well, Evan, uh, how can people find your amazing, amazing work? At E Klosky WTSP. Hit me on the X. I'll respond ninety nine percent of the time. If you're a jerk, welcome to the one percent. Uh, <laughs> you can also head to ten tampa dot com, ten tampa plus, ten tampa Bay YouTube page. And currently right now, we are knee-deep in the Blitz, our Buccaneers pregame show that airs Sundays on 10 Tampa Bay at 8.30, but also you can watch it on the YouTube page and 10 Tampa Bay Plus on Saturdays. So we give it to you a day earlier there. And, uh, man, Buccaneers 2-0. Life's feeling pretty good for them. Uh, Lightning training camp starts, uh, you know, Thursday is, you know, they have media day Wednesday. Camp starts Thursday. We're a few weeks away from the season opener it's it's all coming together is this your second favorite month it's it's certainly my number one busiest month <laughs> usually the rays are taking me to the playoffs too and right. i gotta balance that stuff yeah. so the rays the rays actually are making it much easier on me not that i'm happy about it i'm not no. um the rays are making it much easier on me because usually i gotta i gotta handle postseason duty on top Plus, of yeah lightning starting and, and typically, lightning, like, you know, we do opening night and, uh, you know, Stamp Coast will have his night on October 28th. But for the most part, when baseball season ends, we start allowing the lightning to get their shine. You know, yeah. we give the Rays their time and then fold over into the lightning. But it looks like the lightning are going to get a little bit more airtime in October. Yeah. But you know um, what? You can always get Evan Klosky and Rays talk here at Locked on Rays. That's, that's right. That, that is true. Right. And. And some FSU talk. I got like a 10-second Klosky on the clock. <laughs> a, Evan, do, does FSU lose this week to Cal? Uh, yeah. Yes, they will. Okay. Uh, that That's, that's part seconds. one. Part two. Part B. Does Mike Norvell get fired after this season? No. Okay. There we go. I'm Six confident seconds. on that one. Billy okay. Napier? Yes. And then Alex Golish will get a better job after this season. Um, we'll see. It certainly won't be at Florida. I'll tell you that. 
They already did yeah. the up and comer thing. They ain't gonna do it again. Yeah. As nope. much as I love Golish, he's awesome. Go Bulls. They're bringing good. Saban out of retirement. It's happening, folks. Just wait there for it. it. Um, there it is. Yeah. All right. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you on Friday. <laughs>